Hello, my name is Stephen Mayu, and this is my video series on practical JavaScript where I walk you through the algorithm challenges at freecodecamp.com. In this video, we're going to do the Roman numeral converter, which is uh, it's a it's a little it's a little tricky, but don't worry, I'm going to show you how to do it. And um, if you know if you know what Roman numerals are, then this will be uh, quite easy to to um, the, the concept. The challenge will be quite easy to understand. Basically, convert the given number into a Roman numeral, and then all Roman numeral answers should be provided in uppercase. So if you give this function uh, an argument of 36, uh, then it should return um, xxx vi um, as the answer as a string because the Roman numeral in uh, the 436 is this string, xxxvi. So if you don't know, uh, they provided a Wikipedia um, a link or this mathisfun.com link to Roman numerals. So I highly recommend that you take a look at it uh, if to, to brush up on it if, you're, if you forgot what it's like. Um, they give us a number of different um, um, uh, array methods that we could possibly use. Um, incidentally, in my solution, uh, I didn't use any of these. So, um, I mean, you can certainly use them if you want to. Um, uh, you know, I, 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 I just kind of went in like a totally different direction. So uh, I didn't use them and, you know, like whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, I also highly recommend that you uh, learn and understand uh, objects. Um, in JavaScript. Um, my solution uses uh, objects and um, you know I, I want to keep this video series you know very practical without doing too much explicit instruction. So go ahead and go to freecodecamp.com. Uh, I believe um, you know, if you go to the map and um, you can find it um, you can find it here like basic JavaScript and Let's see. Yeah, uh, basically starting right here, build JavaScript objects and accessing objects with the dot operator and bracket notation and variables and and uh, you know, doing all this stuff. Uh, definitely, yeah. Uh, look look through this, and if you're still stuck, go to you know Code Academy. But um, you need to understand objects sooner or later, and uh, this is a good challenge to, to introduce objects and uh, some other cool stuff. So um, uh, let's just get started because I only have 15 minutes in this free version of Screencast-O-Matic. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and paste in an object literal. Um, this is one example of an object. It's called an object literal. Um, and as you can see, the keys or the properties of my object are the Roman numeral kind of symbols. Um, and beside each one is, um, is, is an integer. And you know, just so you know, um, you know the 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 values to your you know object keys. They could be anything. It could be an integer, a string, a boolean value. It could be an array. It could be another object. It could even be a function. And um, when a function is the um, is the value of a key in an object, we call that a method. Um, and that will come later in the intermediate challenges and most definitely in the advanced challenges. Um, just kind of giving you a taste of uh, what's ahead. But um, objects, I mean, you got to understand them, especially if you're doing web development with um, API calls, you're going to get um, something called JSON or JSON, you know, um, uh, objects. And um, it, basically, they look like this. Um, so, so anyway, uh, let's just get started. Um, I'm going to show you one, uh, demonstrate one like math uh, method that, that I'm going to use later. And I'm going to show it to you right now just because uh, if, if I just, you know, use it without explaining it, it's going to be kind of weird. Um, so let me just show you um, what it looks like and what it does. Excuse me, it's super hot in here and I need a... Mm, mm. Oh yeah, uh, need a cold beer, cool myself down. Um, okay, so consider this: we got this uh, number here, thirty-five. The or 
let's see, 30, 36 divided by 5, okay. Um, oh yeah, by the way, example.html file has been updated, new JavaScript file. All right, nothing new. All right, I've got it open right here. So if I uh, divide 36 by 5, you know, JavaScript will give me a decimal. It'll give me, you know, 7.2. And uh, I can even use the, you know, math.round method and, you know, it'll give me a 7 because it's closer to 7. Round it down, I get 7. Okay, oops, why do I keep doing that? Um, now let's consider, um, let's consider this one, 39 over 5. Okay, save that. What do I get? All right, I get 7.8. And then, as you might expect... Uh, if I do 39 over 5 with the round method, as you might expect, I'm going to get an 8 because 7.8 is closer to 8 and we are rounding up. Now, what if, what if, um, you know, if I have an integer like 7.2 or like a floating point number 7.2 or 7.8 and, and no matter what, I always just want to grab the integer just to the left of of the of the decimal point. Well, that's not possible with round. Um, if I get a 7.8 as a result, and I want to return 7 from it, well, the round method's not going to work. It's going to round it up, and it's going to return 8. And there's something called the trunk method, T-R-U-N-C, that does exactly this. So I'm going to save that, and if I refresh the page, I get 7. So 39 over 5 is 7.8, but the trunk method returns the integer to the left of the decimal place, um, and so that would be 7. Uh, I could do it, you know, 36 over 5, and it's the same story. I get a 7. 36 over 5 is 7.2. Trunk gives me the integer to the left of the decimal point, and um, I'm going to use this later on um, to um, uh, to do some, you know, a bit of math magic um, for my uh, Roman numeral converter. Okay, so that's basically what I wanted to show you. Um, uh, I need to return a string, so uh, I want to store this in a variable. Uh, I'll just call it result, and we can call it anything we want. Let's set it to an empty string for right now. And uh, I want to loop through this uh, object literal, and we could use a you know a good old fashioned you know um, like you know you know while loop or for loop, um, but you know. That, that, that's really difficult, uh, I mean, with those regular loops, because think about it, like when, when we were iterating through arrays, um, using a for loop or a while loop, you know, seemed intuitive. It, it seemed like the natural you know, choice because arrays, they're accessed, we access the values of an array with um, index numbers. So if we have this array, you know, with, uh, let, let's, yeah, I'll just use integers just to make it easy. Uh, we can access the value of an array with index numbers. So this is, you know, index uh, 0, this is index 1, index 2, index 3, index 4. And, you know, with a for loop or a while loop, um, we kind of have like these counters. And the counters, they represent numbers, uh, which represent the index number of an array. But with an object literal, or an object, as you know, we don't access the values with index numbers. We have to access them with the keys or the properties. So we're not going to use um, a for loop or a while loop, but we're going to use something that's a pretty close cousin of that, and it's called the for in loop, the for in. So for our key in Romans. All right. So basically, we're just iterating through the Romans object. Imagine like this is an array, and instead of um, instead of the um, what you call it, instead of the the the, 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 the index numbers. Okay. Uh, we're going to access the values with these keys. And that's what this variable represents. The 
the key variable represents the key or the properties of this object. And I can literally call it anything. I, I could say var prop for pr uh, property, or I can say var symbol, or like whatever. But I'm just going to say var key. Okay, so um, we're passing in an integer, okay, 36. All right, it's represented by num. So if num is greater than or equal to Romans dot key, we're going to execute some code. So uh, like I said before, um, sorry, let me just check the time here. All right, plenty of time. Um, it's going to iterate through this um, through this object from top to bottom, all right, or from left to right if you're writing it out like that. So, number, okay, the number is 36. Is none greater than or equal to 1,000? Nope. All right, next loop. Is it greater than or equal to 900? Nope. Iterate. Next loop. Greater than or equal to 500? Nope. 400? Nope. 100? Nope. 90? Nope. Is 36 greater than or equal to 50? Nope. Is it greater than or equal to 40? Nope. Is it greater than or equal to 10? Yes. Okay. So this condition is true now. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to um, mutate the string now, the, the string result. And uh, we're going to say key.repeat. All right. And remember the repeat method? It, it takes a string and it just repeats it uh, however many times um, in here. So, you know, um, you know, three, an argument of three would repeat the string three times. So in this case, the key right here is a string. And that string would be the capital X up here, the capital letter X. So if we said key dot repeat three, it would repeat X three times, X, X, X. Ooh, hi, the kids. All right, uh, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna say key dot repeat. And inside, we're gonna say math dot trunk. All right, num divided by Romans key. All right, so we're going to repeat the key, and the key is a string. In this case, the key is x, and we're going to repeat it this number of times. How many times is that? Well, num, 36, divided by Romans key, which would be 10, that would be 3.6. Okay, right here, this is 3.6, but we're calling the trunk method on 3.6, so that returns 3. So we're going to return um, and repeat the x key three times. So the result is now xxx, and then after that, we're just going to uh, take the num, and then we're going to subtract from it. So Romans key times multiplied by math trunk num Romans key. Okay, and check the time here. Okay, I got two more minutes. All right, so uh, we've added xxx to the result, and now we're going to subtract from num. So Romans key is 10, and we know that this right here is going to be equal to 3. Okay, so here's 3. 10 times 3 is 30, so uh, uh, num um, is 36, so num minus um, num, which is 36 minus 30, is going to be 6 remaining. And then we go to the next iteration of the loop. And in this case, um, the next iteration would be 9. So num, okay, is num, now it's 6, is it greater than or equal to 9? Uh, uh, um, no, it's not. Is 6 greater than or equal to 5? Yes, it is. Okay, and then we do the same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and add the return method here, return result. All right, I'm going to save that, and I should get a nice uh, xxxvi in the console, which I do. Perfect. And then let me just go ahead and copy and paste all of this. Make sure it passed all of those beautiful tests at freecodecamp.com. Does it do it? Does it do it? Does it do it? Does it do it? Yes, it does. Amazing. And we don't have to do all of this complicated like if statements or anything like that. It's just one 
beautiful four and loop and a little bit of math magic. So thank you so much for watching this video. As usual, I'm out of time. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for improvement, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.